Welcome to section 13.13c. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about how to determine if a molecule is polar or not. To do this, we have to revisit dipole moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at this molecule CO2. So if I were to go ahead and draw the Lewis dot structure of CO2, what you would get is this Lewis dot structure. Now to determine if a molecule is polar or not, you cannot stop at the Lewis dot structure. You need to get the molecular geometry to determine polarity. So in this case, I have steric number two, and that gives me a linear molecular geometry. And so what that means is I have carbon, oxygen, oxygen all in a line. Now, once I go ahead and have my molecular geometry, I want to draw dipole arrows. Now, in this case, oxygen is more electronegative. So I'm going to draw my dipole arrow from my carbon to my oxygen. Now, I'm going to do the same for the other oxygen. So I'm going to evaluate each bond and draw dipole arrows to each bond. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend there's a tug of war. What I will see is both of these arrows are equal in strength, but are in opposite directions. So what's going to happen is my dipole arrows are going to cancel out. So that means there is no net dipole because all the arrows are canceling each other out. If I have no net dipole, we consider the molecule nonpolar. And the idea here is this dipole arrows are telling you which way the electrons are going. And if they cancel each other out, that means the electrons are basically evenly spread throughout the molecule. But let's take a look at water. So I can draw my Lewis dot structure of water. And what I can do is I can go ahead and get my steric number. So I'm steric number four. But in this case, I have two lone pairs. And so if I go ahead and look at this, this is the bent structure. So while this is a proper Lewis dot structure, it is not telling me my molecular geometry. If I wanted to draw the molecular geometry, I would draw a bend in my molecule where I don't have the hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen all in a line. Now what I can do is I can draw dipole arrows. So oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, and so I'm gonna evaluate each bond. Now what you guys will see is my dipole arrows don't cancel out. One is pointed up and to the right, and the other one is pointed down and to the right. While the up and down cancel each other, nothing is canceling out the rightward movement. So what's going to happen is electrons are going to go to one side of the molecule, making it slightly negative. And because the electrons have left, it makes the other side of the molecule slightly positive. So in this case, there is a net dipole, and that net dipole is towards the oxygen. And if I have a net dipole, that means that my molecule is polar. So, gentle people, I can give you a bit of a hint when trying to determine if something is polar or not. If the molecule in question has no lone pairs on the central atom and everything's the same around that central atom, then there is no net dipole and the molecule is going to be considered nonpolar. And that's because if it doesn't have lone pairs, it's a symmetric molecule and all the dipoles are going to be canceled out so long as the surrounding atoms are the same. Now I want you guys to be careful. The converse of this is not true. And what I mean by that is if you have lone pairs, it doesn't necessarily mean that the molecule is polar. You have to double check it. So this rule that I'm telling you doesn't work backwards. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and test your knowledge out. Look at this molecule and tell me if it's polar or nonpolar. All right, gentle people, let's make our table. So we have phosphorus, chlorine, and a positive charge. 
So our valence here is going to be 5, 7 for chlorine, and negative 1 for our positive charge. The numbers we're going to go ahead and use is 1 phosphorus, 4 chlorines, and we have a plus 1 charge. So this is going to be 5, 28, and negative 1. If I add these up, we get 32 electrons. So I'm going to put phosphorus in the center, Cl's radiating out, and then I'm going to fill the octet. Once I fill the octet, I'm going to double check and see if this is a valid structure. So I got 8, 16, 24, 32 electrons in this picture. So this is a correct Lewis dot structure. So if I look at that phosphorus, it has four bonds. So this is steric number four. Steric number four is a tetrahedral. So I'm going to draw one chlorine going out, one chlorine going in, and we have two chlorines in the plane of the page. Now what you guys will notice is my phosphorus has no lone pairs and is surrounded by the same type of atom. They're all chlorines around it. So based on my rule, this is a nonpolar molecule. All right, gentle people, let's do one more. Tell me if this molecule is polar or not. All right, gentle people, let's start with making our table. So we have xenon and fluorine. So xenon noble gas, eight valence electrons, fluorine, seven valence electrons. I have one xenon and two fluorines. So 8 and 14, I need a 22 electron picture. I'm going to put xenon in the center, my fluorines radiating out. I'm going to fill the octet to everything, and I'm going to check if this is a valid structure. So I got 8, 16, 18, 20. So I need to put another set of electrons on here because this is a 20 electron picture. Xenon can expand its octet, so I'm going to dump the extra electrons on there. Now what I have is a 22 electron picture. Now that I've got the Lewis dot structure, let's go ahead and do the molecular geometry. So this is going to be SN5. I've got two bonds with three lone pairs. Now because it has three lone pairs, what we say is that this structure is linear. So all these atoms are in a line. So the Lewis dot structure that I've shown you here matches the molecular geometry. Now what I'll notice is I have lone pair electrons. So I cannot say right away that this is polar or nonpolar, I should use my dipole arrows. Fluorine is the most electronegative atom, so I'm going to draw a dipole arrow going up. There's another fluorine pointed down, and so I'm going to draw a dipole arrow going down. What you guys will see is that these dipole arrows are the same strength in opposite directions. So what's going to happen here is my dipoles are going to cancel each other out, and what that means is I have no net dipole. If there's no net dipole, that means I'm nonpolar. So this is a good example where the converse of the rule that I showed you is not true. So be careful when you have things that have lone pairs. Well, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.